Hey guys, what's up? This is What The Tech, and today we're going to be checking out some sweet new iPhone rumors. Because, well, it's the only thing the world cares about nowadays. Alright, let's check it out. Alrighty then, so this is the official invite for Apple's keynote event for September 12th. So we know exactly the date where the iPhones are going to be announced. These are still rumors by the way, so we might not know what occurs in the end. But because it's so close to the official unveil, they're probably already in mass production and there isn't much wiggle room for change at this point. Alright, so fresh off the heels of probably the most drastic iPhone design since, well, the original iPhone and the most popular since the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, Apple really has a lot to follow up. And this is definitely going to be an evolutionary upgrade instead of revolutionary. So consider like an S upgrade from like 6 to 6S. And it also looks like Apple finally decided on the name for the new phones. Because of the naming scheme they chose last year, 8 and 10, they can't really choose 9 and you know 11, especially not on September 12th. So they had to come out with the iPhone 9 and the iPhone 10s. So out of the three new iPhones, two of them are going to be 10s's and one of them is going to be called the 9. And the two phones that are going to be sharing the 10s name are going to be the 5.8 inch as well as the 6.5 inch. So essentially Apple is going to be officially dropping the plus lineup name. It's going to be reminiscent of the MacBook Pro name style. So instead of saying officially 13 inch MacBook Pro, it's just MacBook Pro on the website. You differentiate from sizing at checkout. So from this point forward in the video, I'm just going to be referring to it as 10s plus or just 10 plus instead of saying 10s 6.5 inch. So rumors have it that the iPhone 10s will keep the exact same design except for some internal improvements with the expected A12 chip, which looks like it will be a boost in performance by almost 30% by last year's A11 Bionic. And when coupled with iOS 12, they do plenty fine. We can always expect a slight camera quality bump with every new iPhone and it looks like this year we'll get a brand new color too blush gold so with the new blush gold color this is something we actually were expecting last year do you remember the copper rumors we think that the reason apple wasn't able to finalize that color to ship with the original iphone 10 was because the company had issues with getting enough successful batches out of it because they had trouble producing the iphone 10s in general the face id modules as well as getting the colors to stick underneath the glass there's also some old ftc filings to back up this claim these colors are right it's a bit boring and muted to me but i'm always a fan of a more customizable lineup you can choose what you want, and I think everyone's a fan of that. I still think rose gold was one of the better color options Apple sold because it was a nice pop of color in a world full of black and white phones. Next up, we have the iPhone XS Plus. This is going to be a huge phone coming at 6.5 inches. So one of the cool things about this phone, and this is the phone I'm looking out for because this might be something I may upgrade to, is because the phone is so large, it can properly replace my 7 Plus, and at the same time, the notch, which should be physically the same size, will look proportionally smaller due to the extra screen real estate. And so it ideally won't be as annoying and you probably could fit an extra icon in too. So maybe better percentage. At this point, we haven't gotten much rumors of the back getting a triple lens setup to copy Huawei's P20 Pro. So, I mean, the P20 Pro is able to get exceptionally beautiful pictures. And I was actually hoping for a triple camera setup because it seems like that's a way to get one up on the competition but oh well. Also, thanks to benchmark leaks, it looks like the iPhone XS Plus was shipped with four gigs of RAM as opposed to the three gigs in the regular XS model. Oh, uh, sorry, 10S model. Here's a render of Apple's calendar app to show what it could look like in a horizontal mode. And you're gonna need an extra gig just to do that. Oh, and another neat little thing is that all of Apple's phones will support wireless charging and it will be faster wireless charging too thanks to upgraded copper coils. The iPhone 10 and 8 right now are pretty slow at wireless charging, especially compared to Samsung. So this is a welcomed upgrade. So the third iPhone that Apple's gonna be bringing into the lineup is a 6.1 inch LCD iPhone. Unlike its OLED brothers and sisters, this iPhone's gonna be cheaper thanks to it not using an OLED panel. And it's gonna have the same notch as well. So you're gonna be having Face ID on all of Apple's lineup. And relatively speaking, this is going to be a more affordable or cheaper alternative to the 10s and the 10s Plus. There are estimates out there that this could start between $600 to $700 depending on configuration. I'm more inclined to think it's going to be around $700 or $750. So the iPhone 10s could be $850 and the iPhone 10s Plus could be an even $1,000. And that's the world we live in where a $1,000 phone isn't 
isn't weird anymore. Some of the ways that Apple's gonna be cutting corners here in order to deliver a more affordable iPhone by getting rid of the stainless steel body and instead opting to use its more traditional aluminum like we saw in the 6 to the 8 series of phones. It will just have a single camera in the back so we won't have those dual camera vertical setup. And if it's my personal guess, it probably won't ship with an A12 chip. It will probably be an A11 or maybe even an A10. Because by using a older chipset, they can save money in internal component costs. You can consider this phone the spiritual successor to the iPhone 5C or the SE, thanks to a more relatively affordable price. And it's gonna be rumored that this phone is gonna ship with a lot more colors available. And some of the colors are pretty cool. So release date wise, the 10S and 10S Plus, as opposed to last year's iPhones, are gonna be available for pre-order relatively soon after the keynote. And the only phone that is going to be delayed is actually the LCD iPhone. Consistently throughout last year, the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus outsold the iPhone 10, only tapering off near the end of the year where the iPhone 10 came out on top thanks to consistent demand staying, well, consistent. By unleashing your most expensive phones first, you're going to have those people who want that upgrade to buy the higher average selling price phone. And then those who can wait and don't need Apple's latest shiny, they can just wait a little bit longer. Thanks for watching What to Tech. If you like what you saw, don't forget to give a thumbs up down below and subscribe. Why not? If you do, you get to see all my future videos moving forward. Are you excited for this year's iPhones? And are you going to upgrade to this year's iPhones? Because analysts are thinking this is going to be a super cycle. I personally don't think so because there's been enough iPhone 8s and 10s where you really shouldn't upgrade at all. And I really don't think there's that much pent up demand for it anyways. All right, see you in the next one. Peace. Survivor.